play Icarus? Should I play Love Map? It looked so cool. I'm down. I don't think it's gonna take too long. One of my favorite quotes of all time is is referencing the flight of Icarus. Uh, Icarus, and it goes, "If we burn our wings flying too close to the sun, if the moment of glory is over before it has begun, if the dream is won, but everything is lost, then we will pay the price." but we will not count the costs. If you chase a dream and you lose everything, then you didn't, like, you pay the price for that, but you still dare to dream and you kind of won. Because you dare to try. We will pay the price, but we will not count the cost. Life. I like that quote. If you paraphrase it, it kind of goes like, <laughs> Let's get money. <laughs> True. Essentially, just, just what you said. Yep. You you summarized it. It's down there. Wow. I think this is all uh, without block, like vanilla. Like, there's no custom items here. It's just the vanilla block set. Which makes sense. I don't think they had custom items at the time of uh, Icarus. But Icarus died chasing his dream? Yeah, and there's like, there's plenty of para paraglide enjoyers and like wingsuit enjoyers and free solo climbers that all like die doing their hobby. Does that mean they're wrong for it? If that's like what makes them truly feel alive, and that's their purpose? Is it better to live on your feet than to die on your knees? Sorry. I mess up my quotes so much. You're not dying on your feet, you're paragliding into a mountain? Yeah, but think about how many cool jumps you would do. I'm not saying you should do this, but think about how many cool jumps the guy did before the one that was fatal, right? Ooh. Like, I watched the documentary, um, Free Solo, with Alex Honnold. Which is mental, by the way. Uh, if you don't know the story, he had a project he wanted to do, which was climbing, uh, a route on El Capitan. Massive, uh, wall in the Yosemite mountain valley. Uh, without ropes, without any ropes or any form of uh, harnessing or anything. So like, just him on the wall, nothing else. Uh, that is a route that takes people several days to climb. Uh, and doing it without a rope is basically insanity. You are asking to die. Like the actual explanation, for example, for um, why you should stop steering when the car changes gears on dirt in this game is really heavy. If I if I told you the details b behind why you shouldn't steer on the car gears, you would be so bored. Tell us. Janik made a video about this, and I talked to him about it. Like, how can you best... Uh, oh, this is so much speed. Wait. I want to go to the sun. Oh my god. Dude, this is so fast. <laughs> no. I said, when you steer when you gear, the gear shift takes longer. Like, it takes longer to go through. But if you if you stop steering, it's like snap instant gear change. And he was like, no, actually, the gear doesn't take longer to change. It changes instantly. It's just the RPM of the car drops significantly when you steer. You don't actually lose speed from doing it, but the RPM drops so much that your acceleration becomes a lot worse. Okay, if you know about cars, you might know that. Okay, you know how RPM works. To an average player, just say it takes longer. Why does it lose RPM only on dirt? So it actually doesn't. Uh, on some road maps, it matters that you don't steer when the car changes gear too. But it's less noticeable because you have full grip. How does full grip make it less noticeable? <laughs> Why must I elaborate? Is it interesting? To me, gears have never been interesting. To me, gears are the least interesting part of this game. 
and the most complex to understand. They're so hidden, like you don't see them. If you get good at managing gears, it's not something that you can show your friends and be like, oh damn, you're damn, wow. That wiggle into that gear shift, damn, sick. <laughs> oh, you didn't, yeah, yeah, see, I didn't see her, wow, nice. If you show them an ice 360, it's like, oh, you are a pro. Whoa, you're, you're sick. 50.4? I beat the map without respawning. How fast can I actually get though? Am I trying to quantum slide? No, 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 I'm trying to speed slide. So, I can explain this too. Basically, car accelerates faster when sliding. At 400, I'm looking for a pretty thin, dark line on my skid marks. But on like 700, 800, I want like a big overlap. And so that's that's what we're going for. And the more accurately you hit that sweet spot sliding angle, the, the faster you go. <laughs> Very weird mechanic. It's not intended at all. It's just a bug that people found like, oh. And Mudda actually have the best, most convincing theory that I've heard for why it's there. Which is that when you exit drifts in Trackmania, uh, it's there to give you like a small boost feeling. Because else drifts would feel very awkward. But then, you know, if you just stay in that state, always ex exiting a drift, then it, it feels pretty good. You go all very fast. I think it's time we take a look at this world record. I'm one second behind. I got auto time. How far is the world record? From Navi. Oh, that's going to be like 520. Yeah, no, that's already... Okay, that's already so much time. I'm afraid. Very diagonal there. Oh, this is nice. 390. Oh, that's a good landing angle. Early speed slide. Boom. Ah! It's starting to feel more and more beatable. But yeah, this map's pretty crazy. I got it on a random map challenge seed, and I was like, yeah, I want to play it more. Any future pyramid videos coming out? So, yes, the, the short answer is yes, but you got to give me time. Because there is another theory that has piqued my curiosity. Because while, like, the internal ramp theory is a good one. The internal ramp theory is a good one, but there's another. There's another theory out there that I'm currently learning about. And when I feel comfortable, I will tell you guys about it. But right now, I am just in the beginning of, of researching, you know, oh. There's a book I'm even gonna read about it. Okay, good. Massive. <laughs> God, this is hard. Ancient Apocalypse was interesting, but I also, <laughs> I also gotta say, like, for example, the Sphinx, right? A big, a big part of the, the show is the Sphinx, and the age of the Sphinx is is a big point in the show. Like, oh, the Sphinx seems to be over ten thousand years old due to these types of uh, erosion on the uh, wall in the Sphinx enclosure. So not the Sphinx itself. Well, one part of the Sphinx is like the... It seems like the head of the Sphinx is a lot smaller compared to its body. So it's like, oh, it seems like the body of the Sphinx is older. And the head was kind of like replaced and added on top of it, uh, which is one thing. And then there's the erosion on the wall in the enclosure that it's at, which is heavily eroded by rain and water. And so the theory then goes, well, okay, how often does it rain in Egypt? in Giza, and how long does it take with that amount of rainfall to get these erosion patterns? And then you get a number like, oh, it would have taken 10,000 years to get this, it's 10,000 years old. But not so fast, because there's so many factors. Like, the fact that the Giza plateau is on an incline, it's on a, it's on a plateau, you know? It's up. And the Sphinx enclosure is below this plateau, so water would pour down over this wall, for example. There's some wind erosion. It's very tempting to go like, oh, 
Sphinx 10k years old, but everything in the in our in the archaeological record there suggests like oh, it's kind of along with everything else they built at this site. I don't think the Sphinx is that old. Oh. But then again, there's people who study this a lot and they think it's old, so... Who knows? You going schizo mode? <laughs> I'm just fascinated. There's a lot of things that fascinate me and the pyramids of Egypt is one of them. Okay, point three gain. Don't they have more sophisticated ways to determine the age of a rock? Like, recording radioactive materials? So, the way they date a lot of things, like the way they find out how old something is. Carbon decay? Is it called decay? They need organic materials, so like wood, or, you know, human remains, or anything, but they need carbon. And then they see, okay, they can find out with that how, how long ago it was, essentially. Since that organism died. You can't do that with rocks, but you can you know, okay, you place a rock out in in the desert, it rains so and so much per year, how much has the rain broken down this rock? Okay, you can make a estimated guess. Okay, probably this old. So unfortunately, no. So like you might, okay, you might ask them, how do they know the age of the pyramid? You have organic material in the mortar between the rocks, and in the mortar there is like, burnt wood that the Egyptians used. Uh, and you can see like, okay, if we date this back, comes out at about 2500 BC. Is there anything else that uh, supports that? Like, are there more pieces of evidence that puts us at around that time range? Well, yes. Um, one fascinating story that I, I, I like from the pyramids is about the Dixon wood piece. In the 1800s, there's a traveler from the UK Go into the pyramids, okay? And he, uh, he wants to go inside the pyramid. And when he's inside the pyramid, he goes to the queen's chamber. Which is not like the, the coolest room, but it's, it's there. Uh, and one interesting thing about the queen- oh, This is so fast. I'm sorry, Alan, sorry, I'm- forgive me. <laughs> It's an interesting conversation topic, okay? Whoa, how did that land? I'm sorry. I will keep talking about it. One interesting um, thing about the Queen's Chamber is this. Uh, this is the King's Chamber, the big one. The Queen's Chamber is down here. Now you'll notice these lines, right? These lines going up the side here. These are air shafts, and the idea in Egyptology is that these were made to transfer the king's spirit to the sky, to the afterlife. So this guy, Dixon, he was like traveling to the pyramids, and he thought, you know what? Um, I want to see how far into the queen's chamber shafts we can get. So he opened the shaft. And inside, he found a piece of wood. He, he stuck his arm in or something. He, he found a piece of wood in there. And he was like, okay, I'm going to bring that with me. Along with other things from this trip. Now, he passed away. And his daughter donated all the things that he had collected from his travels to the British National Museum. Um, but around COVID, around 2020, they actually found the, 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 the piece again in the museum's archives. And that wooden piece uh, has a carbon dating of 3000 to 3500 BC, which is 500 to 1000 years before the commonly accepted date of the pyramid. That's quite insane. That That is no small number, 500 years to 1000 years older. You know, you're talking about thousands of years, you might have a small margin of error, but a lot of things date to that time. And based on like, uh, Egyptian rulers um, and the timeline of the Egyptian pharaohs that would kind of mess things up if it's off by several hundred years and what helps support that the pyramid was built for Khufu is that there's actually graffiti inside the pyramid uh, from one of the workers who uh, made it 
up near the king's chamber, someone wrote the hieroglyphs for Khufu on the wall. In an ancient dialect of Egyptian, which means it couldn't have later been put there. But why didn't this guy just put in a date as well? Like 1500 BC. I don't know why I didn't do it. Would have made things a lot easier. <laughs> put it in BC. Oh, now I get it. Yeah, why didn't he put that there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm slow as shit. That's funny. No, oh, the speed slide. That hurt. So I go high up here. I hit that. That looks pretty good. And I need this. Oh my god, please. Did I miss? Oh, I didn't. Third. I need point twenty-five. It's time to make a decision. Is it worth it? No. Is it something I plan to do? No. Does it increase my self-worth? My, my... No. It's just a record in a racing game. Is chat entertained though? Yes. Or would they want it to be over? Probably, because it's been long. <laughs> chat, what are we thinking? I I'm thinking we back out of this one for now. I'm honestly not feeling it that much anymore. I was hoping I would have it by now, you know? Before it gets too late, to just, okay, we tried. I can try it again tomorrow, but. But I think, I think, I think I, I, I can't get it today. I'm sorry.